Hi everyone and welcome back to another VoiceFlow tutorial video. Today we are going to be going over the API block. Now what the API block allows you to do is call an external service uh, and be able to pull information back. So for example, if you were a, a car pooling service and you are, had already built out a mobile app with an API, you would be able to quickly uh, build out a, a conversational experience with VoiceFlow and connect uh, to your existing service using an API block, uh, which essentially acts as a bridge. And so the API block allows you to make uh, all kinds of API calls to existing APIs. Uh, and so for the example I'm going to use in this video, I'm going to use a, a Google Sheet. So uh, we do have tons of tutorials available on how to use Google Sheets. So I'm not going to go too in depth on how I did that. However, I am going to go over the API block in a little bit more detail. Okay, so first, let's grab our API block here. I think it's hidden behind my camera. There it is. And the first thing you'll notice uh, is there's a lot of options. So this is a very advanced block in terms of, you know, it has a lot of power within it. However, there are a couple main sections. First, uh, we want to put our URL endpoint for our API. And that's essentially, you know, where we are sending our request to. So the best way to think about what an API is, is, um, essentially a calculator that's going to do a function for you and then send you back a response. So here I have a URL set for the Google Sheet that I'm going to pull from. And so we're going to send a get request, which is the type of uh, you know function that we're asking the API to do. And so I'm going to ask the API to give me back uh, a response. So I'm doing a get, which is going to give me back a whole bunch of stuff. And so when the API gives a response, it's going to come back in, in JSON form. And that's essentially, uh, JSON is just a way uh, to transfer data between uh, internet services. And so uh, this API is going to send that back. And so when I hit test endpoint, you're going to see uh, I'm going to get the raw the JSON. So this is what you know it would just normally come back like. But uh, what we do at VoiceFlow is we actually allow it to uh, be formatted for you. So here we can actually uh, you know, collapse it and make it a little bit more readable, uh, as well as actually give you the option to copy the path. So the best way to think about this JSON response is it's kind of like an onion in that it will give you uh, different layers of information. So here's, uh, for example, the version, the encoding, and then you go layer beneath that, and now we have the feed, and then a layer within that, we have the ID here for this. And so there's all this information, but I'm looking for a very particular piece. I'm looking for uh, the joke. And so there it is right there. What do you call, uh, oh, what DP do you call a penguin with no nose? And so what we can actually do in VoiceFlow is we can click this little clipboard icon, copy the clipboard. We can actually copy this uh, route. And so this is going to uh, essentially allow us to pick out this piece of information from within our API response, which is this whole mess of JSON. Uh, and then we also have results here, but we're not too, too worried about that. So let's close this up since we just copied the path. And now we're going to want to go down to result variable mapping. And what we're going to do here is copy in the path we just put. So as you can see here, uh, this is the JSON path. If you don't know what this is saying, don't worry about it. Just know uh, how to find what you're looking for in that big JSON mess that we just tested out. And now we're going to want to store the response in a variable. So here is joke. And so what we're doing here is uh, when I test this endpoint, we're looking for where the information is from the spreadsheet. So there it is right there. What do you call a penguin no nose? We're, we copied that. So we just hit copy on this. And then we're going back into it, putting this in here. This is the object path. So if you guys want to see this one more time, this is called the object path. And this is basically the route to get from the outer layer of that JSON response to the information we want. And then we are storing that uh, response within this variable called joke that I've already created. And so now we uh, are, storing the response inside the joke variable, which is great. So what we can do here is now actually use it. So I can put in joke. And so let's actually test this out. What do you call a penguin no nose? Nice. And we'll see how this happened. You'll see right here, it made the API request. So it sent off the request to the Google spreadsheet and said, get me uh, all your information. And then we told the API, uh, when we got the response back, we then told the API block using that object path, 
where the information within that response was that we wanted. And then lastly, we told the API block where to store that information uh, when you know we finally found the stuff we wanted using the object path. And so we use the variable uh, joke to store it. So there you see API set joke to the value that it got back. Great. So that is a very brief uh, overview and example of the API block. Uh, it's incredibly powerful as you can do not only gets, but you can do a whole bunch of different types of API functions and requests. Uh, we allow you to test everything and you can also you know, do more secure services such as Airtable by using uh, you know, your headers and parameters uh, with right, you know, right here, this section. Uh, however, we're not gonna go into that. This is just a very brief overview of the API block. Cool, so hopefully this uh, was helpful to you. We cannot wait to see what you build using the API, API block. We have tons more tutorials on API on Voiceful University, uh, so make sure you check it out, and uh, great. We'll see you in the next video.